Hey everyone, Brian Dillon at San Diego Comic Con 2022 for Fanbase Press, coming to you once again with uh, some news from the con floor. We're in small press and we're talking to Clockwork Watch Films. So let me introduce Yami and Corey over here. Uh, how's it going, guys? Yeah, okay. We are full of zing, super excited, um, a little bit jaded. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the Comic Con experience. It's yeah. just like you have all these mixture of emotions and everything that comes with it. It's just it's a wonderful experience in itself. Yeah. Sure, it's good to do that. And, and it's important to let uh, I guess our viewers know that uh, it's Sunday. We are at the end of the con, so we we have seen it all. Everyone's uh, holding themselves a little differently this this, this last day, but but still, you know, pushing forward forward to the end. Are you guys both holding up well? Um, four things. Oh, yeah. well, just um, I think we are. Corey, Corey did mention something about sleepwalking this morning. <laughs> but no, we we had an absolutely amazing time. Um, not too many late nights. In fact, um, I know on at least two or three other days we're in bed by ten o'clock, snoring by ten twenty-seven. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> so not last night. Last night we thought it's our final big night here. We've got to make the most of it. So we we decided to spend a few more hours. Hours out, and that a few more hours going to hold into about half one in the morning, and then you didn't actually get to bed till about two a.m. in the morning. So yeah, it is time to clean up the gap, but the buzz is going to keep us running for the entire final day. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, why don't you tell uh, for those who have, have not experienced uh, Comic Con, maybe or not here, what is Clockwork Watch Films, and uh, what should they know about the uh, the company? So, but what Watch Films is a is a collaboration uh, between Corey and I. And what we have done is taken a story and, and built a story world, a world around the, the narrative, which is more like a co-created sort of narrative where we have the books, the books offer people an opportunity to come to a certain meeting. So like invest in the story, we won't say invest in the story. And that investment oh, itself can be brought to life at immersive life events where they can meet some of the main characters from the but also create their own characters and bring them to life. And then on top of that, we then encourage them to write about their experiences and then we publish some of those as newspaper articles within the next book. So we're co-creating this whole panel alongside them to the public. Uh, and that's what the story is, is in itself. It's a, a, a sandbox to a certain degree for people to explore certain certain concepts and certain historical artifacts um, with a way of questioning and looking at them themselves within the context of what's the story. It's kind of interesting plot twists and turns, but it looks like the Victorian age and the repositions of colonialism within that, within the steam pump. So it gives it, it's, it's, it's a mirror. It's a mirror to look at yourself and say, hey, historically, maybe there could have been a bit of fine tune in here. Uh, but it's books, immersive events, so great for story world, some newspaper artifacts, uh, all leading up to a film. Okay. Uh, and um, Corey can tell you the first part in, in terms of I approached him through a friend with the elements of the film script. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the idea was that we had these film scripts for this grand idea about popular watch, this concept, which mixed all these different elements together, which sounded really intriguing. But I had experience writing comic books at the time, and uh, you, know, you can kind of dabble too much in that side of medium at a particular moment in time. So it brought me on board, and I said, well, this sounds incredible. You know, let me have a look at it, let me take a look at the script, let me pull them apart a little bit, put them back together, We're effectively rebuilding a plot for all intents and purposes for the story, and then putting them together and forming that, and as that you know, built and developed, I realised that I could become immersed in the story world, and funnily enough, we were talking to a consumer yesterday that came to our books, and said, like, oh, are you in the books? And we had to think about it for a moment, because we said, well, actually we are in the books, because we were drawing participants into the stories of the books, and we came effectively part of our own camp as a result. Which so is a bit weird, because it means that effectively even this is technically part of our camp. <laughs>
that's really interesting. I like the uh, the collaborative uh, story uh, element of it. It feels like a, a combination between uh, what people love about role playing games and uh, cosplay, and then the storytelling of, of films and comics. Um, for for those who are intrigued by this idea, how would you describe uh, the basic plot of the story? Um, what the is a story of love, automatons, and weird songs. Okay. Uh, and, um, it's based around uh, a world where you've got clockwork automatons, and one of the automatons gains a sentience and believes that his next week will be accepted to be accepted as a human being. And that leads to turmoil in the world. And from that point on, we engage with the public as well as to how and why that automaton or automata should be banned from being recognized as human beings. So that's the element that we crowd to through full cake stories. Excellent. Very interesting and, and very precious, uh, obviously, with what we've been seeing with AI. Um, are there any specific uh, books you want to highlight on the table that you have uh, at this uh, specific convention? Well, yes. So as you look through the table, um, as you beautifully pointed out, this is Sunday. So we've lost a lot of titles already. Sure, um, sure. But going from um, my right to left, you have Magical Myths, uh, which is fantasy and folklore and magic itself. That is one of Corey's books. Um, followed on, you have The Flower Gal, which is part of an anthology called Deadlier Than, which uh, mainly focuses on, on women um, through various prisons. And you've got um, Sven, you've got but, um, but it's just kind of marginalization in general. So realistically speaking, we have four stories all kind of focusing on marginalization marginalization through themes of something like depression and mental health and isolation, identity, self-doubt. All these things kind of match them together through the lens of sci-fi and fantasy. And bizarrely enough, I know it's actually going to say a bit weird, but it's also got a very strange critical role and I know there's a lot of, a lot of critical role fans out there. Oh, yes. We actually have several artists that are part of that collaboration as well, so it became a very wide kind of net of different elements, different sources, all blending into stuff which is all very personal to me because it all relates to stuff that I've personally gone through, whether it's doubting myself, doubting my identity, feeling like society is crushing against me, or even going through depression myself. So all those elements are kind of being blended up into deadly and also to a certain degree magical myths as well. Yep, uh, and then you've got what work what? Which is a story we were talking about, about you know, starts off with an, an Indian family invited to the UK, and they arrive as um, saviors. They actually put the great into Great Britain, um, and um, the father's a kinetic engineer who introduces a cell into a generation of clockwork slaves, and one of those slaves gains the sentence and um, tilts the upper crop to uh, And the only other thing, super important, that we're doing, um, apart from just the books, is um, we believe steampunk in some respects has still got certain references to within certain worlds but something you know, within certain people's minds as being the celebration of cloning which is so what we have done is we've created a little patch just to show people that that is not the case and um, it's um, not steampunk hate colonialism and it's got the steampunk core um, with the black power salute um, but all, more importantly rather than just a, a bit of a simple display um, these are being sold to fund young girls underage girls in Kenya um, put them through school and feed and educate and, and house more or less saving them from an underage marriage an FGM so we have put in this campaign and even on some of the days I've like, you know, been here and I said well as long as they sell more patches I can get more money to the gap you know and they think oh whoops no I actually meant to be selling books this is a comic convention but they do go hand in hand they are referenced within the story so that is what we have well, I really appreciate that, that last uh, that last item because I, I think that you are as a, as a collaborators and as a company focusing on 
the power of stories and how they can, can really affect others. And I think that gets lost sometimes in, in the spectacle of those stories, you know. So uh, really uh, commend the work that you're both doing. Thank you. Uh, if, if someone is not here at Comic-Con and they are you know interested in, in checking out your work or, or purchasing any of these items, where can they do that? Uh, well, I believe uh, we've got a shop on Comics, which is C O M I C S Y, comicsy.co.uk. And um, if you look for um, Black Mark Watch, you'll be able to find the books there. Uh, also, we are just, fingers crossed, uh, we've just got our very first store in the US to stop some of that. Is that the first one? Or I think it may be. It may be the first one after 10 years. <laughs> Still, yeah. So we want to we'll get those in. And they will be based in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 So we get a, a shop in LA to take our books. Um, and Deadly Dan from Los Angeles got online. Yeah, if you go to my website, quarrypopperson.com, basically I've got links there for Deadly Dan, Matt, and your son, Papa, what? So it's kind of like a one stop shop with lots of potentials. Links out to Yoni's site, links out to Papa, yeah. what's his site. It kind of allows us to kind of get a little bit of a wider net to everybody that's associated with Los Angeles. So, yeah, it's good. To head over to there, you'll be able to catch everything about us. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for talking with me today. Hey, thank you. And uh, thanks for being on our fire. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it. Especially on, on a Sunday, too. <laughs> best, best Island Small Press. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, viewers, if you want to see more interviews like this one, you go to www.fanbasepress.com and we will hook you up.